Welcome to VS Fisheries and welcome to a very, very exciting day at VS Fisheries. We are netting one of our biggest production ponds, a pond that contains lots of fish at the end of their fifth and their sixth summer. So hopefully we're going to see fish ranging from maybe eight or ten pounds right up to 20 something pounds. Really excited to see what these fish look like. The boys are just getting the net set now. I'm going to go and join them. <laughs> Okay, so what we've done, we've shot the net around this deep pool here. The fish historically always hold up here as the water level goes down. We're bringing the net in now. It's a massive wall, like a big curtain of netting. Got floats at the top, a lead line on the bottom. The leads drag along the bottom, and Martin and Harry are bringing the leads in, hopefully, underneath the fish. And there's quite a lot of activity in the net, I can see. There's some little carp. These are great little fish but they're not really what we're after. We're after something a little bit more substantial than those. And judging by that bit of thrashing about going on over there, we've caught a few. Carp farming's not an easy job. It's no small task to take all the water out of a lake uh, and to get all the fish out. It's, it's hard work. You're working in the winter. Uh, you're working in slippery, wet conditions. Uh, yeah, and I think it'd be fair to say that just about every fish farmer has got a bad back, bad joints, bad arthritis, and is falling apart. So yeah, it's, it's quite tough work, but it's a lifestyle choice. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to put something back into the industry that I love. I'm a real sucker for a linear. I absolutely love them. Look at that beautiful zip linear. This fish will be five summers old and I'm guessing about 15 or 16 pounds. What a cracker. As I get older, they get heavier, which must be a good thing, I guess. So this is the holding tank with the C6s. So that C6 means carp, which is six summers old. And hopefully, looking at them, they look like a lot of good 20 pounders there. We're moving a lot of fish around the farm and because of that we have to move them in quite big numbers and quite quickly. If we took one fish out at a time in one sling and there's 400 slings to move then, isn't there, from one lake, you know, you'd be there for days and days. So we put several fish at a time in a sling, but we've we basically calculated how many fish we think is safe to transport. Uh, and these fish, you've got to remember, they're our pride and joy and they're very valuable. We couldn't sell a fish that was damaged, so we have to make sure they come up to the fish house in good shape and then they go out to the customers looking their very, very best. Each one of these tanks holds 600 litres of water and believe it or not, we can put 50 or 60 doubles in there safely for about an hour. So for the time that you're seeing them now, they look quite crowded, but these fish in here are absolutely fine like that. Well, in this bucket, we've got thousands of C1s. So these are fish that would have been bred in May and June in the lake and they will have come from the, the parents that we've been harvesting. So the C5s and C6s that are bred, this is their offspring. And because they're in a, a relatively well-prepared pond, we always get quite, quite a good recruitment. Bear in mind that one big female carp might produce a million eggs. So although we've got a few thousand here altogether, it's only a very, very small proportion of the actual number of eggs that were produced um, when a fish was spawning. So uh, yeah, lovely, lovely fish there. And if we have a look at them, proper little crackers. Everyone is an acorn. Loads of little carp. Carp farming is a pretty filthy job. I think if you're going to be a fish farmer, you have to accept the fact that you're going to be wet from your toes to the tip of your nose pretty much 24-7, 365. You've got to learn to love that mud. Well, all the fish are in the transport tanks on the trailer and on the truck. Uh, the next job is to move those back up to the yard. The next thing that Martin's going to do now is just nipped over the otter fence and he's going to turn the pumps back on so we can start sucking out the last of this water. Time to unload that lot.
when we get them out of the lake and bring them back to the fish house and unload them into nice clean water that's your first chance to look at your fish and think oh, wow don't they look fantastic and uh, they look great as you see them drifting around in the clear water and it really gives us a chance to look at the stock and think yeah they've done okay or you know they they've done better than expected or possibly not as well as we'd expected. The fish house can hold a lot of water. We have a lot of tanks in here, seven big tanks holding four cubic meters of water each. Um, you will have seen that they're not all brim full either. So we only fill them about halfway up and that, there's a good reason for that. If you overfill the tank, the carp jump out. And obviously that would be an expensive mistake. So what we do, we fill them only halfway up and in each one of those, we might put a hundred doubles, maybe slightly more if it's really cold weather. Uh, and then we've got the ability to change the water. Um, one question I'm regularly asked is, do you feed the fish in the fish house? And the answer to that is no. It is literally a holding facility. It's like a transfer port. Fish come in, they're graded, sorted, and then they go out again. Might be a bit echoey under here but hopefully you can hear what i'm saying and, and this tank now these cages have got several thousand beautiful little sea ones that we've just harvested out of that big fish pond they're a bonus they're obviously lovely little fish and i love fish of this size it's like a little everyone is just a little blueprint of a future 40. give them 10 years and they could well be getting there two and tank three will alternate. We'll do sort of 50 and tank two and then 50 and tank three. Uh, tank five will be the C5 keeper, so sort of 15 and a half to 18s. And then we'll do the 18 pluses later and they can go in the, the top two tanks. Okay. So if I man the scales, there'll be a bit of chaos as we get started and hopefully it will make sense. The Reuben Heatons, it's the moment of truth. How big are they? Well, it looks like Meadow North's been another fantastic year. Year after year, that pond seems to smash its record. We get bigger and better fish. So yeah, I'm very, very happy with that. And I think it looks like we've had one that's probably a good upper 20. And that for a C6 is a serious carp. How big was that one, Marv? Uh, 22 and a bit. 24 and a quarter. 24 and a quarter. <laughs> Sorry? Uh, in there, yeah. 23 and a quarter. Same time? Yeah. They're quite big then, aren't they? Look at that, 23. Quarters, so that is a C5 keeper. It's confusing. Harry Ballard, you can come back tomorrow. Look at that, bruiser. Marv, that's got to be a C6. Yeah, 18 and a half. 18 and a quarter. Okay, well a quick round up, that's uh, seven of our C4s that we were expecting out of there, 50 lovely C5s to sell and, and 28 that we're going to keep for another year to go back to become C6s and we've got 18 beautiful C6 fish. So that's the process, we've got to go and run it again now and run another net full. but the next time you're going to see me is when we load up some of these absolute crackers and send them on their way on a delivery to go off to a fishery. Maybe one day you'll be lucky enough to meet some of them.
Well, good morning. It's about 18 hours since we last spoke. Since then, we've had another net round in the lake, caught a few more fish. First light in the morning now. Viv's just arrived. We've cleaned his tanks out, washed the sacks off, got everything set up. It's time to load those cracking fish up. OK, are we all good to go? How's your dart, sir? It's all right? It's all right, only the lit readers will get this bit. <laughs> OK, are we good? OK, we've got one customer who's after eight commas specifically, so I'm going to pick those out now, and the lads are pass them up to Viv and into the transport tanks. Fish of this sort of size, these are C5s, so they're five years old. What we like to do is actually transport them in sacks, so it stops them banging around in the holding tanks during the transport. What you would have seen yesterday, a bit different to that, is we put the whole lot in the tank without sacks, but when we've got a lot of fish in a tank, there's not much room to move about. But when they're on a, on a trip out on a delivery, we like to give them uh, a sack to travel in. So what we do, I pick up the fish, put them in the sling, just like carp fishing, but only quicker. The holding tanks that the fish go into are the big blue tanks that we put the fish into once they've been harvested are actually big vats holding four metres cubed of water. It's a lot of water, four tonnes of water. And what we have to do is ensure the water quality stays in good condition within those tanks, obviously, because the stock are very valuable. So what we do, we can do water changes regularly. We add salt to the water at a rate of three grams per litre. Uh, so they're in a very, very mild salty solution which helps um, any damage the fish might get, any knocks, it helps with that. It also helps against parasites. And lastly, as you can see, we aerate the ponds very heavily. We've got a customer who just wants one scaly mirror. I think that ticks that box. One hot topic that's often discussed in the angling press is fish diseases. I'm sure you'll all be aware of KHV, Koi Herpes Virus, and there are other very unpleasant fish diseases out there. So what we have to be aware of at the fish farm site here is biosecurity. So we have a very strict biosecurity policy. Uh, customers that come to the farm aren't allowed into the fish house until they've been, dis been disinfected, not all over, but certainly their footwear, and we make them wear uh, specific Wellington boots that are allowed in the fish house. Uh, very smart white ones so that no one's going to ever walk away with them. They're not very carpy, uh, but they're very practical. Um, we disinfect the kit in and out of various ponds around the farm, so we, we have to be really tight on fish diseases. You know, it, it, this is a, a reasonably intensive farm. We've got a lot of fish, and so part of good husbandry is to make sure that you disinfect nets and equipment between the separate ponds so there's no chance of spreading disease around the site. <laughs> If you get the genetics spot on, you can grow proper monsters. This is the biggest C6 that I've ever grown on the farm with Viv. And this one weighs 28 pounds. That's not bad for six years old. Give it another 10 years. Just think how big it's gonna be. Rock the British record time. What we like to do at VS Fisheries is actually select specimen brood fish with a known pedigree and bloodline and use those to produce our next generation. So our actual fry that we're producing from our fry ponds, I can actually track them back and go, right, that fish has come from these parents and our customers like that. And that enables me to also mix in a good variety of different scale patterns. So linears, leathers, commons, fully scaled, heavily plated fish and sparsely plated fish. So getting that variety, which is what I think we all love as carp fishermen, um, using my own brood fish, specific brood fish, enables me to do that.
Well, that's the fish loaded. All that remains now is for Viv to deliver them to a fishery and hopefully they'll make some anglers very happy.